Just watch me break in your sweat You're falling into me, touch me I swear You would do anything that I want So keep us awake till the dawn Ooh, Baby, feel free I wanna make you sweat on me I wanna make you sweat on me curtains in the back. I got some decent lighting. I mean, my little robe. <laughs> I'm a coffee. Mmm. What the heck is up? I am really digging this right now. I feel like this looks very YouTube. Very YouTube. Anyway, I am here. Um, it's Wednesday, June 10th. It's Thursday, June 10th. Thursday, June 10th. Today is a very exciting day for me and Sam. Sam and I. Sam is my boyfriend. <laughs> and we are picking up our new car today. So I am so full and excited. Um, whenever he gets home from work, which would probably be around 1.30. That's my guess. Um, so I am just going to get ready. I just jumped in the shower. I did not wash my hair. Um, I actually washed my hair... When did I wash my hair? <laughs> That's always the question. Um, I actually washed my hair on last Saturday, which was like the 5th. So it's been like a good five days. Um, and I blew it dry and obviously like since then it has gotten, you know, worked out in and sweated in and all that good stuff. But like the top, I mean, it's still like not even greasy. And I haven't put anything in it besides actually literally nothing. I just washed it on Saturday and blew it dry. So just some like good hair vibes and good hair genetics. I feel like I should maybe close this. It might be messing up the lighting or not. Now I look like I'm in a dungeon, like basement bedroom. Oh, whatever. Anyway, um, I am going to get myself ready for the day. <laughs> Don't want this to open up. It's like 12 o'clock actually. Um, so I had a pretty productive morning. I took Goose on a nice little walk. Hey, I'm Goosey. Okay. Um, I got home yesterday. So I was home for the past week. Um, I had, I'm sorry, this chair is so squeaky. That's really annoying, but it's actually the only stool I have. So anyway, though, I was home for a week last week um, for my cousin's newest little addition. We had a baptism for her new baby, um, and that was really lovely to just go home for a week, see the fam, reconnect, feel good. I feel rejuvenated. Um, I'm happy to be back here. It's weird because, well, here is North Carolina, in case you have no idea who I am and you are just stumbling upon this video. Um, my name is Courtney. I don't even know if I said that in the beginning of this. I just assume that people who follow me on Instagram who already know my name are going to be watching this. So anyway, though, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, and I am happy to be back in North Carolina because I have like my own little routine here. We've been here for like two and a half years already, which is pretty freaking crazy if you ask me. Um, so... Like I said, I'm just going to get ready for the day. Um, showered after I worked out and took Goose for a walk and had some breakfast. I watched some YouTube vids of my fake peeps. I literally only watch like two people on YouTube. So if you have any like cool recs, let me know. I really love watching. Um, so like Julia and Hunter Havens, I don't know if you watch them, but they are like some of my faves because I just love their style. I love their vibe. I love their just, they're really casual. They don't come across like super YouTube-y, like follow, like, subscribe, you know? They're just like doing their thing, showing you if you don't like it, whatever, you know? And that's, you know, almost like kind of is what re-inspired me to just do my own freaking thing because I have loved making YouTube videos in the past and I know I've said this a million times, but I always fall off of it because I do get 
sometimes too lost in like, oh, did I say the wrong thing? Did I say that right? Am I being too weird? Am I weird? Should I not do this? Are people even gonna wanna watch? Like, am I talking too much? Million things. So I'm just going to do me and be me. Uh, and that is essentially what this entire channel on YouTube will be all about basically. Um, but I am really excited to kind of dive back into it. Um, I have been kind of distancing myself a little bit from social media um, and it has been really nice but I have a lot of things that I also really do enjoy doing that obviously have to do with social media. I love making YouTube videos. Um, I love sharing like fun little things that I find. I love just sharing me and my boyfriend. I love us. I love our relationship. I love him. Um, I think that we're funny and <laughs> we get along really well. Um, and yeah, I just want to bring some good vibes to your home or wherever you're watching this. I say home because I actually recently started watching YouTube on the TV, which is like a freaking game changer. I literally feel like I'm watching TV, but it's just the couple of YouTube peeps I like. So, enough jibber jabbering. I'm going to get ready, put some makeup on, and then I'm going to get dressed. So, like I said, we are shit, picking up a new car today. So I'm very excited. Uh, I actually like truly have never had a new car before in my entire life. Um, <laughs> so growing up, like when I got my license and throughout like, high school and things like that, my dad was not going to buy me a new car. There was just no way in hell he was going to do that, which is totally fine. But I would always have like at least a decade old car um, and they were totally fine. They were actually really cool. Like my one of my first cars was like a Pontiac. I had like a really old style, not super old. It was probably like a 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee, which was really cool. Um, but the bottom was like rusted. So that one didn't last long. I definitely totaled a couple cars as well, which obviously just kept preventing my dad from ever wanting to, you know, steer me in the direction of a <laughs> semi new car. So, um, I am very excited for the past like three years or so, especially since being in North Carolina, Sam and I were just sharing a car. Um, and we were sharing the Chrysler. It was a 2010 Chrysler 300 um, that he bought a few years ago from his mom. Um, and we were just, you know, going to drive that bitch into the ground um, because it wasn't really worth it to get it fixed. A lot of different like, you know, like lights and shit were starting to pop up on the dashboard. So it really just like was really starting to go under. We were actually driving, oh damn, I got all over the side of my back. At least it was just like clear primer, but fair. Anyway, we were driving to pick up food and dinner one night and the engine light came on and then like the over, like the heating gauge on the car or whatever, like went all the way to the top as if the car was overheating and then the battery light came on and then literally like all of the lights possible <laughs> to get your car like to a shop ASAP came on. So uh, it was just kind of like trudging along down the street. We got to the restaurant to pick our food up, which was great, but then we couldn't start the car again. So it completely died. Um, Sam actually managed to get the car started the next morning and then brought it to like straight to CarMax because we had been there like the week prior, um, just kind of looking around and going through the process and what it would entail and talking to somebody. Um, so Sam brought our car in, the one that had literally just died, managed to get it there, just putting along <laughs> down the street, um, and we got an appraisal for the car because other than that, it was in good condition, but um, I really don't know how drivable that is going to be. But the craziest part, which blew me and Sam away, was the fact that we got $3,000 for that car. $3,000 for that car. We were set on just getting like a thousand dollars maybe uh at one point i was like i'll be happy if we just get 500 bucks for this car i just want it gone i am over this i don't want to see it anymore i don't want to deal with it ever again but we ended up getting three thousand dollars for that car so um they're obviously not going to sell it because that would be terrible nobody could drive that car but whatever process they went through i don't know but carmax gave us three thousand dollars for that piece of junk so it was really great anyway <clears throat> This, I did share this on uh, my Instagram story. This has been like one of my favorite face makeup 
combos for summer because the BB cream is a really light weight but I also really like this because it adds just like um, it matches my tan a little bit better um, and you only need a little bit of it because it is like very very um, like shiny bronzy how can I show you those better oh hey there see it's like very bronzy. Sometimes I just like using my hand because honestly I feel like I have more control of like where it goes. And I just kind of want to do myself an all over little, you know, whatever this is. I obviously am not a makeup person. I don't know how to talk makeup and that's definitely not what I am trying to be. <laughs> uh, because I don't know makeup. I have been enjoying it a little bit more recently, like I actually actually have. I still don't think I would ever spend like $50 on a mascara. I'll show you the most expensive makeup thing I've ever bought. It is this Lancome, why won't you focus on anything but me? I appreciate me being like the main star of this video, but like if you could just focus on like something else for like even a hot minute. That'd be great! Okay, anyway, over that. This is the Lancome Idol Mascara. I had a gift card to Ulta from my grandma, um, and I bought this. She gave me a $25 gift card, and this was $26, so I still actually owe money on it, but it's really good. Anyway, that's the most expensive makeup thing I own, so yeah. Anyways, um... I just really like that face combo because it just, it does add a little bit of like a glow and like a little bit of, there we go, that's so much better. It does add a little bit of a glow, but it also like evens out and smooths out my skin tone, I feel like. Um, but yeah, so anyways, <clears throat> that's that. So the car, the car that we bought is sexy, sexy, sexy. Um, I am definitely quite excited for it. I will show you when we actually get it. I'm not gonna ruin any secrets. We didn't, don't worry, it's not like a freaking. we didn't get like a Tesla SUV, I can tell you that much. I can tell you that much, folks, we did not do that. Um, we did have a budget. We weren't just like balling out <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, it's actually a 2018, so it's not even like brand new new, but, um, it has like 32,000 miles on it. It's gonna last for freaking ever. And um, it is definitely like a good investment. Sam and I, Sam, actually this is like me and Sam's like first like big adult like person, like big relationship. I think I'm gonna put you guys on this side, honestly. I think that this just might be nicer. Just like <laughs> ignore that. We obviously were trying to patch the hole. Well, we sand patched the hole, but we obviously never painted over it. This is so much better. I am so sorry that the first half of this video was shit lighting. Um, I don't know why I thought that it would be better that way, but anyway. So yeah, this is me and Sam. Sam and I's first big, like, relationship purchase together, I feel like. I mean, we are living together, but we're renting. So we just like split rent, but that's like different. This is like the first thing that we're like buying and owning together. That is not a dog, I guess. The car is more expensive than Goose, so I don't know. Goose is definitely our prized possession, but you know. Anyway, uh, so I am definitely really excited. I'm really proud of us as well. Like I said, we wanted to buy a car for a really long time, but then we were just like, you know what? Let's just drive this thing into the ground and we'll see how long we can make it. And honestly, it was probably only like another month. So it was time. Let me tell you that. And I couldn't be more excited. So enough about the car. Um, I would love to just maybe chit chat about me, get ready with me and get to know me a little bit because I haven't been making YouTube videos in a very long time. I also have not really been as active on Instagram. I totally am because I do love it and I love the little like community and group of peeps that I have for sure. Um, but yeah, just a little bit less. I found myself getting like really 
just overly consumed with it and if I wasn't posting I would be thinking about what to post or I would just be like taking pictures of literally everything and videoing everything like anytime I'd go out to dinner like your phone eats first like I don't know I just got so sick and tired of it and it just became such like a habit and I just realized like I was always thinking about like oh what can I post what can I do like what'll be fun like blah 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 and I was like I just need to breathe because um this is my real life here and it was just like really disconnecting me from it for a while so I pulled back the reins a little bit definitely a really good choice in my book for sure um I love being on Instagram and talking to and connecting with people and like just being me and being weird and sharing fun things and whatnot but I don't want it to be like my entire life I just want it to like be a showcase of my life you know what I mean so let's just like start from the beginning as I continue to put some makeup on Where's my eyeshadow thing you go um okay so um hi my name is Courtney I am 26 years old I live in North Carolina and my favorite color is actually this color so <laughs> that's my bio no I'm just kidding but um yeah so I grew up in New York and I am currently living in North Carolina um I'm from Long Island I don't know why I'm talking and getting distracted and like why am I putting on lip liner right now I don't know I don't know <clears throat> my boyfriend Sam and I moved here about two and a half years ago uh for his job actually he was getting a new job and he is now working with his brother um, and they are actually running a Boar's Head distribution route and it has been going quite well. I'm really proud of them. They've been growing it, getting more accounts on it and whatnot. Um, and it's been really nice to just see them working together and being together because his brother used to live in Dallas. So we didn't really see him all that often because we were in New York. Um, and then... That happened like a couple years ago and we made them we made the move down here with them and let me say that having them here like having a little bit of family even though it was like Sam's family um, did make it a lot more comfortable because I had never like left home before I commuted to college um, and really just never left home so <laughs> it was really my first time and definitely definitely something obviously I had to get used to um, and it was definitely a huge adjustment period. So, um, for a very long time, I was an online fitness and nutrition coach. And I would help people, you know, of course, yes, reach their goals, you know, in the gym and all that good fun stuff. Um, help them lose weight, help them get stronger, and really teach them the fundamentals of, like, fitness and nutrition. You know, what it means to, like, work out. Um, and how, you know, working out isn't a one-size-fits-all thing and we can reach your goals, you know, allowing it to also fit into your lifestyle, right? I'm not going to push somebody to go to the gym five days a week if they can only commit to, you know, three, right? So, um, it was, a, it has been and still is the greatest experience ever. I have connected with so many women, like hundreds and hundreds of women and have helped hundreds and hundreds of women. Um, all different, like literally all different demographics from like people who are like single moms to, you know, people who are like just turning 21, um, you know, ex like grad students, things like that. So tons of people um, I have helped and have taught, you know, like I said, the true just fundamentals of fitness and nutrition. Um, I think that everybody deserves to be taught those fundamentals, especially nutrition, because we don't. I mean, everything that they would teach us in school and like health class and things like that is so incredibly outdated and like isn't even a good freaking system to follow at all. Um, so yeah, I, and and I and I started doing that. I started coaching people because I just started kind of figuring it out for myself. So back in the day, like I said, I'm 26 right now. So um, back in the day when I was. 15, so literally a decade ago, um, I was diagnosed, I guess, um, with anorexia. So I went, I didn't go away to high school, uh, but I went, I didn't go to my public high school that like everybody else went to. I went to an all girl Catholic high school. Um, 
and so it, it wasn't really like all the pressure like everyone was so mean and catty and like I developed an eating disorder it was just all kind of like self-driven and it and it honestly started out as like this fun little like oh I'm gonna lose 10 pounds with like my new best friend uh, for summer and then I just got caught in the whirlwind of it all and it just continued to spiral and spiral I literally remember one day driving to the mall with my mom and she just looked over at me and she was like Courtney you need to stop this diet before it gets out of control and out of your hands and I was like oh, what are you talking about I'm literally fine mom like I'm literally fine um, and then of course I was not fine <laughs> and just after my 16th birthday I landed myself in the hospital for 10 days so that was not fun um, and I'm joking about it now obviously it was the lowest of the lows my true rock bottom um, I think I was in like so much denial that it even had gotten to that point you know but I joke about it now because I've healed from it um, and it's not something that you know any longer kind of like holds me back or is a part of my life now like I am completely and utterly healed from that um, experience and I do truly believe that I needed to go through it and that like me having it in, I mean, this is probably gonna sound weird but I feel as though me having an having an eating disorder was like meant to be like I was supposed to truly go through that because if I didn't I never would have I never would have needed and felt such a strong desire to learn the fundamentals of fitness and nutrition for myself and to essentially use myself as a guinea pig and that's what I did I remember I was in school actually for pharmacy at the time before I sh uh, changed to food science and nutrition and um, I just remember coming home from class because I commuted um, and watching uh, Lane Norton videos up the wazoo <laughs> um, literally trying to learn anything and everything about macronutrients tracking macros you know workout splits programs the whole freaking nine and I just remember being mind blown by the IIFYM community at the time because like I can eat ice cream and I can have pretzels and cheese right and it can fit into my diet and fit into my day um, and it did really help me get over a lot of fear foods that I developed during my eating disorder because I was like okay like I have to hit x amount of fat and like I really do like avocados but I'm so scared of them so I just would eat the avocado and like nothing would happen my body didn't combust it didn't explode um, and I didn't gain fat overnight so I <laughs> eventually would get over my fear foods um, so it was definitely very very helpful um, I started to compete and whatnot and then blah 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 and then I just eventually started coaching people anyway um, and yeah I've been a nutritionist in a couple different personal life training studios and in a gym before but I really just enjoyed working online and you know spreading my sharing my life and my journey in the hopes of like helping other people start their own. But last year in 2020, I was getting ready to compete again. Uh, I competed back in like 2017, I think. And um, it was great at the time. I was like, oh my God, I love this so much. And I started to prep and I was literally like six weeks out when the virus, the pandemic and whatnot happened. So I called it quits. I was like, I'm not going to keep doing this for no end in sight. Um, and so I also just really started to realize that I didn't like living that way. I didn't like to be restricted. I didn't want to be limited. I didn't want to have to question if I could do something or couldn't do something. I didn't want to have to track my food. I didn't want to, you know, think that, oh my God, I had like an extra piece of bread, like, fuck, you know, I didn't want to have to think like that at all. And I didn't want to go against my body's kind of like natural, just hunger cues and fullness cues and things like that like I felt so disconnected from my body because I was just doing things and eating in a certain way and working out in a certain way and doing x amount of cardio right because I had to because that was what I was supposed to do to help me reach this goal and like yeah I looked freaking sick I looked dope and I did have fun doing it but after I didn't have to do it anymore and after like it was kind of taken away from me because of like the pandemic and whatnot I was like I don't think I actually 
want to do this. <laughs> it's probably a good thing that the pandemic happened and I wasn't able to compete because I always said like, like I did look really good and I was prepping for wellness. I honestly had like no doubt in my mind that I was going to do really freaking well and I was really excited about it. I really, really was. Um, but I know that if I was to have competed and did really well, granted if I didn't, whatever, but if I did do well, which I thought that I really would, um, that I would have wanted to compete again and I would have wanted to compete again and again and again and I just knew that it was going to be a, a just kind of cycle downwards that I didn't want to have to get out of, you know, like prep is hard because like I said, it, it takes away your intuition because you are, you're eating, you know, X amount of macros, X amount of meals, you know, at X times, you're training a certain way, just everything is just so like this or like this way or no. So really, I really started to feel that and I really wanted to kind of regain that. So I just honestly like went into this intuitive eating about, I didn't even, a barely reverse dieted, I just started to intuitively eat and I figured it out for myself. It was definitely more of a mind game than anything else because of all of the rules and restrictions and structure that I... Okay, my camera overheated, um, so again, forgot or don't know where I was cut off. Um, but I know I was talking about um, intuitive eating and how I didn't like feeling disconnected from my body. I didn't like feeling like I was just living on autopilot. I didn't like feeling like I couldn't do what I truly wanted to do, whether it was like something I wanted to eat or like just take a freaking rest day, you know, um, or take an extra rest day. I obviously have rest days, but you know, um, and just feeling limited, like never feeling satisfied. Like I was still hungry, you know, towards the end of it, of course. Um, not the whole entire prep and it wasn't miserable and I'm not bashing competing. I do really love it. Like I really do. It's a freaking incredible what your body can do truly. Um, but anyway, for me last year, I did realize that I do truly enjoy a healthy lifestyle and working out and eating well and incorporating, you know, obviously nutrient dense whole foods into my diet but also allowing myself to enjoy, you know, those fun foods and to have ice cream, to go out for dinner and have a glass of wine or whatever, a couple cocktails with friends and just not have to think about it and not worry about it. And to know that like, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and feel good and I get to move my body in the ways that feel good to me. And sometimes, you know, that's just doing some yoga or maybe some days like it's just taking the dog on a couple really long walks, you know, maybe a couple hour walks, um, something a little bit more leisurely. But other times I have been really enjoying Orange Theory, which is nuts. I still can't believe how much I love it. Uh, I never thought I would because I was just a very strict, like, in the gym, bodybuilding split type of gal. <laughs> um, so I actually do really enjoy it. It's a great way to get cardio in. Um, and it is all kind of self-paced. So they do, like, give you the workout, but you pace yourself, you know? Um, so I have been really enjoying just being able to push myself and whatnot. Um, you know, I'll still go to the gym and do bodybuilding style workout. Um, and yeah, it's just nice to have uh, an array of things I can do and to feel like I have an abundance of things that I can do and I don't just have to go to the gym and lift back or lift legs and then do 30 minutes on the treadmill, you know, which again, sometimes I actually really love doing that, but I don't have to do it and that's the difference. So, um, yeah, and, and I really just want to share my life. And I have healthy tips and healthy meals that I want to share. Sam and I are like the two best chefs I freaking know. So I have already asked him like, can we do like Friday eats or something and like cook dinner, you know, um, and share the recipe with you guys. He's like, yeah, whatever, I'm down. Um, and he's not a big social media person and he gets very awkward in front of the camera. Um, whereas I just, I'm comfortable and like, yes, I'm like kind of talking to myself, but I'm like used to it, I guess. <laughs> well, I worked from home or, and work from home and have for at least like four years, both part and full time. So sometimes Sam will just like look at me talking to the camera and I'm like, I know you think that this is weird. Can you please stop staring? 
So, anyway, um, I just let you show you my life, man. Um, so yeah, so that is that. Just put my finish putting some makeup on. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Um, and I'm gonna get dressed for shorts. I bought these new shorts. I'll show you. Um, I bought these new shorts off of Mercari actually because. I have been selling a lot of my own clothes on there. Um, highly recommend. I've actually, I've made like, I don't know, I've made like 150 bucks and I've been selling things for like literally $5. So go for it. Um, but I bought these on there. These are Levi shorts. They're like perfectly my size and baggy, which I love. I don't like tight shit. Um, and yeah, so probably, yeah, like look how freaking cute. They fit perfect. They're so cute. So these were like 50, I think I paid $40 for them on Mercari and they were originally 70 at Urban Outfitters. So pretty dope. Um, and you can definitely find some cool shit on there. Oh my God, where, where is that other cool freaking thing I bought on Mercari? Where's the box? Oh, yes. I just have to freaking get the, I just gotta get the film for it, but I bought such a cool, cute little Polaroid. How freaking cute. It's like perfect. I just got to buy the film for it. So I have more things that I want to put on my Mercari, um, but I had gone away last week, so I didn't want to upload new shit and then have people buy it and then me be home and like not able to ship it. So. I have more that I want to put on the, uh, my little closet page. I will put the little link in the description box if you are curious as to what I may potentially have to offer. Um, definitely workout clothes, but I have a lot of like shorts that just don't fit anymore. These are can-can, like jean shorts. I don't know what size they are. I think they're a 27 or like a four or something, 27. Um, and they're really cute, but I just don't like the way they fit my legs anymore. Um, what else? I have this really cute, like, cheetah bodysuit that's like a high neck and then sleeveless, which is really cute. Like I said, I have workout clothes. I have a couple really nice dresses. Um, I have a dress from Fashion Nova that I have never worn. The tags are still on it. I have this cute summer dress. It's like an orangey coral color and then has this, like leather detailing kind of um but yeah there's some cute stuff on there so i'm gonna get dressed i'm just gonna put a shirt on i think i'm gonna wear these shorts because like why not why not do the crazy and it in a moment you are the last so why not why not okay okay to wear this plain black tank. I have no more battery on my camera since it was sitting in the draw for a while. Um, I should probably put a bra on, but whatever. Um, so I'm gonna go charge this up and I will see you whenever Sam gets home and whenever we go to get our car. Be united, bro. Irregardless of, which is not a word, I don't think, but irregardless, I've already sure. said it. Of, Let's get it. Of. What? I know. We are waiting for our car to come around the corner. We haven't even seen it yet. I don't even know what color it is. It could be a pink, for all we know. I have pink car. I miss no. that. I'm excited too. It's not, hopefully, it's not that one. No. Ours is like black, kind of. Cody, 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 where are you, Mr. Carmax? Come on. I'm like really excited for the surprise, though. Love don't come easy. So dope. So dope. Hell yeah, Cody. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, uh, drives. So I do need uh, just a couple signatures from you before I let you ride. 
this is it. I think we're going to absolutely make those silver grills black as well. But sexy, sexy Jeep. I love the black details, you know, like that and the tires. So this is it. How freaking beautiful. I love it. We just test drove it and then went and got a smoothie. Okie dokie. So, 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 so. Um, I'm currently in Sam's car uh, that he uses for work. Um, I am going to Sarah's house. Sarah is Sam's brother's wife, so Sam's sister-in-law. And I'm going there to babysit the kids for like maybe an hour. That way Sarah can come to CarMax and help us sign. She co-signed for us so that we would get a better price just because she has a dope, um, she has like a, a dope credit score and mine's not that great thanks to student loans. <laughs> and Sam's is okay, but we just used her because it would just have made this like a lot better and a lot easier for us as far as financing goes. So that is that game plan. We did just test drive it and <laughs> there's a tropical smoothie around the way, uh, around the corner and Sam was like, I just want a smoothie. So, gosh, smoothie. It has spinach, kale, mango, pineapple, maybe strawberries in it, I don't remember. It's called the Island Breeze, right? Island Breeze? Island Dream, the Island Dream uh, from Tropical Smoothie, so very good. I highly recommend. Well nourished. <laughs> After so, okay, hold on, I gotta make this turn. Oh, you guys are gonna go all over the place right now, but that's okay. Oh, nice, they kinda, whoa! Fucking shit balls. Ugh, turns are not obviously my friend when it comes to this. I guess I turn the windshield wipers on that move. How do I fucking turn these windshield wipers on? signing all the papers then they're gonna come basically get me and then we're gonna go back and get the car so lots of going back and forth but um, it works <laughs> and we have our new car I am so freaking hyped so excited such a good process too I would honestly recommend CarMax I mean this is obviously like my real first like car buying experience but it was pretty seamless super easy no complaints at all um, and yeah so that is that, but I don't want to break my camera, so I will catch up with you in a little bit. Making up some peppers and onions and some little patiti tacos. We have leftover chicken from last night, and do we have left any, oh yeah, the spice. This is the spice that I bought, and I don't really know what it is. I think it's blackened and like a little jerky, I'd say, but it just really intrigued me, so don't <laughs> mind our very disorganized spice cabinet. I've been wanting to organize that since we moved in here, and Sam keeps telling me, what's the point? They're just gonna get all unorganized anyway. Good to know. Goose is in timeout because he keeps trying to hump me. Sometimes he does that. Right. Yeah, you're not allowed to touch me like that. Mm -hmm. Stay. And... Sharing a glass of vino to celebrate our big adult purchase. That's pretty much it, man. We are happy new car owners. I'd say. Nailed it. I'd say so. Yeah, making a quick little dinsen. So that's pretty much it. I think this will probably be the end of the video. And um, I don't like when Sam swears at me. Bye! Mmm. A 
we are taking our own at her COVID tests. I don't think we have COVID at all, to be honest with you. Um, but I am all stuffed up and Sam's workplace got at home COVID tests. So we're just gonna do it herself and see what comes back. I don't know where to put this. It literally just says like half an inch. Uh, oh my I god, mean, you're I'm crying. Gonna, yeah, I got you. I mean, that's like three quarters of an inch right there. Let me just do it. I don't want you to do uh, it. You, you, you don't you, know you, what three quarters of an inch of my nose is. I don't, I know what three quarters of an inch looks like. Okay, I got it. I mean, now you're at like a full inch. Go up to your finger. You gotta get both nostrils. Just keep going. It keeps going. It's not that bad. Just keep going. Angle it differently. Angle it that way. Keep Ow! Thank <laughs> you! I, I mean, honestly, let me. Thank you! Oh my I know, god! Thank you! Oh my god! Because when I went to the actual doctor place and they did it, he did it so quick. He was like, boom, in and out. You just rub that against all of my tickle nerves. I'm not a doctor. I haven't done this a million times. I just need to make sure I get a good swap. And you. It's not going to be good because I sneezed all over it. You, you tickled my sneeze or something. You're the worst or so patient you could ever ask for. Not that bad, but like you literally tickled my my spots. Look, how do you make this work? Oh my god, you can't tell. Anyway, okay, so one blue line means you're fine, and a blue and a pink line means that you're not fine, and they both have one blue line. So we got oh. that going for us. Yeah. So although you can't see it, we are not. At risk of COVID. I'm away. I'm away. Why? 